So I just went on a walk in this amazing forest. I was going to record a video today, but it's just too cold, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, enough of that. Moving sucks, as most of you know. But I'm back and I wanted to do a quick little video. I have so many new supplies that I wanna share with you guys and I cannot wait until the weather gets warmer so I can go paint outside. There are three, yeah, three forests within a few minutes from my door, so that's exciting. So let's jump into the markers. So a friend of mine in Germany sent me these markers. It was a total surprise. I knew nothing about these pens before they before I opened the box. And to be honest, it took me an embarrassing amount of time to figure them out. Yes, I could have read the directions and watched a video about how to use them, but I usually just jump straight in and figure things out as I go when I get new supplies unless something has completely stumped me uh, I was given like some hints about how to use them and for this video I wanted to explore the first few minutes of using these pens because I feel like it is a strange experience um, and for me the intention is to use these doing landscape value studies outside which means these need to be portable, they need to be easy to use, and they can't be too cumbersome. They come with two different nibs, as most artist markers do these days. You get a felt tip brush nib and a medium hard nib, which kind of resembles a Sharpie in my opinion. But the magic is in the chameleon juice, as I call it. It's a reservoir of clear alcohol, I believe, that you can saturate the nibs with, therefore diluting it and allowing you to get a gradient within this one marker. I actually loved how it felt and looked on the toned paper. So we'll just try out the brush tip first. It's nice. You can get a variety of widths depending on how hard you press. It feels pretty soft. And then the uh, fine point or marker tip or what I don't know what you would want to call this side but um, it's a solid like felt tip kind of marker pretty standard I guess if you if you're careful you can get a variety of widths so yeah that's pretty standard you're supposed to a touch the nib like this together and then you hold it upside down for a few seconds so that this chameleon juice can seep into the tip of the marker. So as you can see it's touching the chameleon tip to the brush nib inside there and we're just supposed to wait a few seconds and let it soak in it's a bit odd 
of a design because it, I can see that it's actually pressing against the tip of the nib and I feel like maybe over time that could cause issues, but I don't know. Okay, so we'll take off the chameleon tip and put that back on there. <laughs> Trying to get it. And now when we draw, it should start with a very light gradient and if we keep coloring, Oh my God, of course my door doorbell rings. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Let's see if it stayed light. Yep, it's still light. So now if we keep going, eventually we should get back to that darkness. So I guess the whole point of these markers is to make it really easy to create gradients. And that is what appeals to me the most. That is actually pretty amazing. And just the fact that I let, I set this down for a minute and left to go answer the door and came back and it was still like within the proper gradient and I was able to finish it and make it look so smooth. That is awesome. <laughs> so this is just standard computer paper, nothing fancy. You can see that it, there are hardly any streaks in there. It is extremely smooth gradient. Now I wanna test this on a textured surface, so I'm gonna break out my sketchbook. So I will just quickly write CG9. C, oh my God, CG9. Cool. Gray. Nine. Okay. And now we're gonna use the brush tip really quick just to get a base to see if you can see any texture. Okay, and now we're going to repeat. I don't know how long I'm supposed to hold this upright. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, now let's test out the gradient. Yep, 10 seconds is more than enough. I'm trying to use steady lines that slightly overlap each other so that I don't end up with too many streaks. Right, you can kind of see here, the texture of the paper is showing through and it sort of looks streaky. Just something to keep in mind that it may depend on your paper how smooth the gradient looks, but overall I'm like really, really excited about this. So I'm gonna go ahead and test the rest of these. All right, so here we have it. These are the six colors that I was given. And actually, now that I see them on the paper, I feel like this is a really good selection. Even just six colors, uh, If I feel like this would be more than enough if I was drawing outside, just doing value studies and stuff. On a couple of them, you can tell they were a little more streaky, and I'm not sure if it was because I didn't put I didn't let the alcohol seep in long enough on the darker one, um, but there is a little bit of streaking in the light area. That also could be due to the fact that I didn't like really try to sit there and like let it blend and, and bleed into itself. I did notice that as I got closer to the darker end, some of the, it, like it would stay a little bit wet and it would kind of soften itself out. So that is really cool. So I was thinking that I might just try to do a quick sphere or something to shade in just to test out like how 
the shading actually works in a real application before I go out and do like a study. So in order to do that, I'm gonna use the brush tip again. And I'm going to start with the light area first and then let it go down into the dark. I think that's kind of what you have to do on these. I feel like you have to start with the lighter area and let it bleed down into the dark in order to get that nice smooth gradient. So we'll just do a circle. And I'm gonna test this out with adding a little bit more. So I can already see that it's softening itself out again, which is pretty cool. So I'm going over some of the art, the spots I already did. Okay, this is hard. <laughs> If you're trying to get, the thing is you don't really know when it's going to, when the alcohol is, the clear alcohol is going to uh, finish. So you know you have like a certain amount of time in order to get your lighter areas, but until you do this like a ton, until you get really used to the timing, I think it's extremely difficult to plan that out. Oh God, <laughs> it's so streaky. I mean, it's not horrible. Just the fact that I'm able to do this with one marker is pretty cool. So I feel like these markers have, they have a lot of potential, but it's all a matter of practice and just really getting used to that timing. So. I mean, that isn't like the worst fear in the world. I think I've done worse. <laughs> but this lighter area is the tricky part. But man, like just the potential of these is really exciting. And obviously there's tons of ways that you can do this gradient thing with markers. I am not a marker expert, but I've seen people doing it with various things like brushes with alcohol swabs and all of the, I mean, there's probably a ton of techniques out there. However, this is all about convenience. The fact that everything you need is right here in your hand. You can just throw a couple of these in your backpack and go. I think that's, that's the selling point for these. So let's try one more pass on this and then we'll give up. <laughs> And then we'll do an actual landscape. Yeah, see, it's like you, you kind of, I'm just kind of guessing like where the darker areas are gonna be or when the darker ink is gonna come out. Oh no, I just added another streak. Okay, we'll do one more. I think the clear alcohol does help to soften it a little bit. Like when I come back in and do that, I think that really, really helps. Oh God, let's just, let's just stop. <laughs> it's just, it's like a little canyon scene, I guess. I guess you'll get used to how much you need. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, 
All right. So just quick observation so far. One, two. The fact that I have to constantly stop and put the cap on in order to get the lighter colors, I feel like that could be an issue if you're rushed for time while you're painting outside, you know, because the light changes so fast. You only have maybe 10 minutes before it could change pretty drastically, sometimes less if it's really cloudy. So, you know, you just have to kind of expect that. We'll see how fast we can do this. <laughs> I'm planning on doing more plein air drawing, painting outside, drawing outside as soon as the weather gets a little bit nicer. It's still a bit too cold. So thank you guys for joining me on this quick little review. I had a lot of fun with these and I think they have so much potential. Let me know if you end up using them or have used them before and if you have any tips for me, but I feel like they're extremely versatile and it just will take some getting used to. Thank you.